welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes and today we are going to be looking at electrochemistry or electrolysis okay the first thing we need to understand is the difference between conductors and insulators now conductors have a low resistance and allows an electric current to flow through it. Examples of conductors are metals, for example, copper, iron, aluminium, graphite, which is an allotrope of carbon, and sodium chloride solution. Insulators have a high resistance and restricts the flow of an electric current flowing through it. Example, plastic, paper, rubber, and glass are all insulators. Now, this is a simple circuit that can be used to test the conductivity of a material. In this first circuit here, we have a cell, and we have a bulb, and this is where we put the material we want to test. So if we wanted to see if graphite is a conductor, we'll take a piece of graphite and put it in the circuit. And if it conducts electricity, the bulb will light. In this second circuit, we have a battery. Remember, a battery is more than one cell. The longer, this long line here is a positive terminal and the short line is a negative terminal. And again, we have a bulb and we have our solution to be tested here. This is the solution. And we have two electrodes dipped into the solution. And we also have an ammeter, which can be used to measure current. So if the solution conducts electricity, we expect to get a reading on the ammeter. Now, what is an electric current? An electric current is a flow of charged particles. Okay, now it's a flow of any charged particles. In a metal, the charge carriers are electrons. Electrons carry a negative charge. The free electrons in the metal are mobile and therefore move under the influence of an electric field. So, metals conduct electricity because they have free mobile electrons and electrons have a tiny negative charge. An electrolyte now, which is a solution containing ions, the charge carriers are positive and negative ions. The positive and negative ions are able to move in the electrolyte. So why does a solution of sodium chloride conduct electricity? When sodium chloride is dissolved in water, we produce sodium ions, that is Na plus ions, and chloride ions, Cl minus ions. And because these particles are charged and they're able to move in solution, the electrolyte is able to conduct an electric current. So you need to be able to explain why a metal is able to conduct electricity and why an electrolyte is able to conduct electricity. Now, we need to familiarize ourselves with certain definitions. First one, an electrolyte. An electrolyte can be a molten ionic compound. So it could be a molten ionic compound or it could be a solution containing ions that conduct an electric current. Now, with respect to electrolytes, we have a weak electrolyte and we have a strong electrolyte. A weak electrolyte is one that has a low concentration of ions present. Now, examples of weak electrolytes are weak acids, for example, ethanoic acid or vinegar, and we also have weak alkalis, example, aqueous ammonia. 
okay now weak acids and weak alkalis are partially ionizing solution see this word here whenever you are asked to explain what is meant by the term weak or strong we have to do it has to do with the degree of ionization so if something is partially ionized in solution meaning that we have a low concentration of ions present then it is classified as weak On the other hand, a strong electrolyte is one that has a high concentration of ions present. And examples of strong electrolytes are molten ionic compounds, for example, lead bromide, that is PBBr2, strong acids, example, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, strong alkalis, example sodium hydroxide and last aqueous solutions of ionic compounds for example sodium chloride dissolved in water copper sulfate disso dissolved in water now a strong acid or a strong alkali is completely ionized in aqueous solution the key point that they want here is completely ionized whenever they ask you what is a strong acid or a strong alkali and what that simply means is that the, uh, there's a high concentration of ions present in the substance. You also need to know a definition for electrolysis. And electrolysis is a process by which electrolytes are decomposed by an electric current. Make sure you know the definition for electrolysis. We also need to know what is an electrode. An electrode is the material that conducts electricity to and from the electrolyte. And that material could be copper or carbon in the form of graphite. The anode is the positive electrode. That is the copper or the carbon is connected to the positive terminal of the cell or battery. The cathode is a negative electrode and this is connected to the negative terminal of the cell or the battery. And positive ions in an electrolyte are called cations and negative ions are called anions. This is a simple diagram that is used to demonstrate electrolysis. So look at what we have here. We have a cell right the long line is a positive terminal right and the short line this line here is the negative terminal so the positive terminal is connected to now these are electrodes here this is an electrode and this is an electrode and the electrode that is connected to the positive terminal is called the anode and the electrode that is connected to the negative terminal is called the cathode and here we have the electrolyte this is the solution we are dealing with and this is just the container that holds the solution or holds the electrolyte now you have to be able to identify the ions present in an electrolyte now remember we said an electrolyte could be a molten salt all this simply means is that you take a solid salt and you heat it until it melts so you're converting a solid substance into a liquid substance when it becomes a liquid you have ions present in this liquid and they are able to move under the influence of an electric field so in sodium chloride we have sodium ions that is Na plus and we have chloride ions says Cl minus in the case of lead 2 bromide we have lead ions that's Pb2 plus and we have Br minus ions Notice the state that we have here. We have liquid. The state is liquid in this, in this case. Now, dilute sulfuric acid, dilute H2SO4. From the sulfuric acid, we have H plus ions and we have SO4 to minus ions. Now, you'll notice that we also say we have ions from water. When we have a solution, water is able to ionize itself to produce H plus ions 
and hydroxide ions so basically if we have water water undergoes this reaction and notice that the reaction is reversible what this means is that the reaction is taking place in both directions so we have water producing H plus and OH minus and at the same time we have H plus ions recombining with OH minus ions to produce water so this is a reversible reaction right? and because it's a reversible reaction it means that we have a low concentration of H plus ions and OH minus ions present in solution the next one is concentrated hydrochloric acid so from the hydrochloric acid we have H plus ions and we have Cl minus ions again we have water present so we must have H plus and OH minus ions in dilute sodium chloride we have Na plus from the sodium ion from the sodium chloride and we have Cl minus ions present and again from the water we have H plus and OH minus in the case of concentrated sodium chloride it is no different as above we have sodium ions and chloride ions and again we have H plus and OH minus ions in the case of AKS copper 2 sulfate we have Cu2 plus copper ions and we have SO42 minus sulfate ions and again from the water we have H plus and OH minus so you have to be able to identify the ions present in a particular electrolyte you also need to be able to predict the direction taken by ions in solution now remember we said the positive ions are called cations and the cations move towards the negative electrode or the cathode okay so the cations are positive and the negative electrode is the cathode so from your physics you would know that unlike charges attract each other so think of it as the cation moving towards the cathode the ca you have ca in the cation and you have ca in the cathode so that's one way to remember it so the positive ions move towards the negative electrode and the negative ions or the anions move towards the anode which is a positive electrode so you have the anions is negative and the anode is positive so if we have a simple electrolysis taking place here we have our cell we have our two electrodes one here one here and we have our electrolyte and within the electrolyte we have positive and we have negative ions so the negative ions or the anions will move towards the anode and the positive ions or the cations will move towards the cathode okay so this is a simple diagram to show electrolysis and the movement of the ions in the electrolyte now another topic that is closely associated with electrolysis is oxidation and reduction now oxidation is the loss of electrons and it is also the increase in oxidation number reduction is the gain of electrons or a decrease in oxidation number you may have come across this acronym before OI L R I G oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons okay now the anode is a positive electrode right anode is a positive electrode the anions or the negative ions drift towards the anode 
Now, if we are looking, let's say we have a solution containing bromide ions, that is Br minus. At the anode, the Br minus will drift towards the anode and it will produce bromine, that is Br2, plus two electrons. This equation is what we call a half equation for electrolysis. Now, if we look at the oxidation state of bromine, in this part here, the oxidation state is minus one. How we know it's minus one? There's a minus charge on the bromide ion. And in bromine, Br2, the oxidation state is zero. Why? Because under standard conditions, bromine exists as Br2. And we know that the oxidation state of an element in its standard state is zero. So bromine is moving from oxidation state minus one to zero. So if we look at it on a number line here, we have, we have zero here and we have minus one here. We have a decrease in oxidation number and that is called, sorry. Right, we have a decrease in oxidation number, right? One sec. Oh, sorry, I did the direction wrong. It's supposed to be minus one to zero. So it's an increase in oxidation number, right? And that is called oxidation. So each Br minus ion has lost an electron, right? And this is an oxidation reaction. So therefore oxidation is taking place at the anode. At the cathode now. Now we said the cathode is the negative electrode and the cations or the positive ions drift towards the cathode. In this example we have H plus ions and H plus 2 H plus plus 2 electrons produces H2. Now let's look at the oxidation state. The oxidation state of the hydrogen here is plus 1 because there's a small positive charge here and H2, the oxidation state is zero. So we have, we are moving from plus one to zero. Therefore that is a decrease in oxidation number and that is reduction. So each hydrogen ion has gained an electron and this is a reduction reaction. So therefore reduction takes place at the cathode during electrolysis.